Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we've got a bit of a spicy brew for a donation deck today, where we pose the question, is it prism? And the answer is, we hope so. So we are playing a blue-red prism deck. So we have a lot of traditional prism elements, so Chalice of the Void, Trinisphere, Magus of the Moon. You know, we've seen these sorts of things before in prison decks, and we're going to be pairing them out with our usual Ancient Tombs, City of Traitors type jam. But that's where we start going a little bit wild. So we're also going to be running this Hull Breacher plan, which is kind of prison -y in a way, because this stops our opponent from drawing additional cards, and then when we cast a Days Undoing, we just get to wipe their whole hand. So that's pretty exciting to me. On top of this, we've also got a Khan as our main win condition. And we've got a small little Khan board here with a little bit of Graveyard Hate, the Coating, the Lattice, a Ballista, and an Ensnaring Bridge. So just a little small package there. But what we can do, which is really nice here, is go and get the Liquid Metal Coating. And we've got a lot of stuff that's pretty good with Liquid Metal Coating in play. For example, Dak Faden, where we can just gain control of anything we want. Prismari Command, which destroys an artifact. So we've got some interesting stuff going on that we can leverage here. Got a couple of brazen borrowers for catchalls, and obviously the Dak Faden is there to try and give us some card quality. There is a little bit of tension here, though. So we have the Trinisphere, but we also have Force of Wills. Now it may look like these aren't really working well together, but it kind of just means that we have a bunch of overlapping effects for like combo decks to shut people down until we can get this, the hooks in. Really, we've got a couple of Fury to deal with enemy creatures which can also be one of our win conditions. And we have four is it charm, which again pitches to force as well as the fury. And this is a card that's fine. It crops up every now and then. It's never gonna be the most amazing thing you've ever seen, but it's got some nice utility. We've got like a little spell pierce here or two damage to a creature or draw two cards, discard two cards. Given the fact that Orcs Bowmasters is quite prevalent, Having something that can kill it seems pretty reasonable, and it also flexes into some other things. So this is a card that should never be bad, but is unlikely to ever be amazing. And that's probably fine. We can pitch it away with some Dak Fade in action, or we can pitch it to one of our pitch spells. And that's pretty much the deck. Mana base-wise, we've got eight fetches. All of our fetches get islands, and we've got four Volcanic Islands and one Thundering Falls, and then a couple of each basic. The reason we want them to all get islands is because... If we go and get this non-basic here to cast a Magus, then that's going to be A-OK -okay for us. But we can also just go and get our Islands. And then if we have a Magus in play, we don't care if everything is mountains. That means we don't need our own mountains. So that's the logic behind that one. Sideboard-wise, aside from the Wishboard, we've got a little bit more removal in the Fury. A couple of Meltdowns to deal with some Artifact decks. A bit more Counter Magic. Some more Blood Moons. I think when we want Blood Moons, we want to have access to loads. We've got six available 75 and a bit more graveyard hate in the form of fairy mccarth and that is the deck it's a little bit of a wild one but i'm excited to see how it plays out this is kind of loosely based off of something that bosch and roll played a while back i will link uh his video in the description below because it was a really fun league and you should always watch some great content when it's out there so that was kind of the inspiration that the original donor had and we kind of built on it from there so remember to like and subscribe and let's put some people in blue red jail our opener here is a little bit slow, but we do have a force of will to kind of get us there, but we're going to have to deploy three lands before we can really start cooking. But if we can find a, one of our soul lands off of a surveil, for example, then we might be in a good spot, but we are on the draw. I think we're going to try it. I'm not really sure of the exact metrics of this deck, but I think it's worth trying. We've got like uh, an emergency button that we can press in the force of will if things start going wrong for us. All right, just a ponder from our opponents. They fetched the a basic, so the Mega's looking less good, but the whole Breacher is certainly looking good into a blue cantrip deck. Let's see what we draw. We're likely to just play the Thundering Falls and get our sort of half ponder is how I like to rate this. All right, things are starting to come together here. Let's have a little look. Um, okay, this gives us something good to do on turn two, so I will put this on top of my library. And this will also test out our opponent's hand for counter magic, because they'll probably want to deal with this Chalice. Flow strand being cracked. We're going to see a green source into. Oh no, we're going to see a. I thought there might be a. Be, uh, ooh. How do I feel about counterbalance? Counterbalance is a bit of an awkward one, isn't it? Realistically, how many threes do I think our opponent has in their deck is a better question. So if they're just like a blue cantrip deck, almost all of their. So they're going to have lots of one drops, a few two drops, five drops, 
maybe some four drops. They're not going to have many three drops. I think we can probably just let this ride. That's not where we're fighting. Now, that could come back to bite us. But just given the makeup of our deck, I think we're in an okay spot still. I'm a little bit worried about some sort of back to basics type stuff here. So I'm going to go and get a basic island, I think. And then we're going to try and deploy this Chance of the Void where X equals 1. You got two drop on top. Swords to plowshares. Well, this gets cut off by the chalice. All right, they're going to force of will this. Pitching dress down. I think I want to force this back. It's just going to stop our opponent from setting up the counterbalance. And we know the force of will isn't going to get hit by a counterbalance right now. All right, we in? We're in. Okay, so that shuts off that plow, which would be something that would be pointed at our hull breach that we'd have to counter anyway when we're trying to do our combo. So I like where we're at here. Right, let's just pass to our opponent's turn. See if we can get hull breach into days on doing and just make our opponent have a miserable time. They have at least one one drop in their hand that we know of. I suspect there's probably more. I'm not expecting days out of a counterbalance deck like this that's playing quite slow. I think we can just go get a Volk here. We need blue blue for anything. Maybe hard casting a force of will down the stretch. So potentially we could take this island. Right, let's cast this. Let's see what's on top of your counterbalance. Oh, the back to basics. Rude. Very rude. Well, I'm glad we got a basic there. Uh, so we can stop them getting the back to basics by just resetting our hands. But we can't do that because they have the back to basics on top, right? Yeah, that's not the one, is it? That was unfortunate. We did say that our opponent is unlikely to have threes, but we did sniff out the potential of back to basics. It's just awkward it was there. Okay, they don't want to draw that back to basics. So we can take them off white mana with... Okay, we can't take them off white mana now. Trinosphere. Is that where I want to be here? I don't hate the Trinosphere. Let's see what's on top of your counterbalance. Teferi. Yeah, we're kind of getting punished for not countering this. Hey, Teferi. It's a good one. We're going to bounce this chalice. They are not. Okay. Let's see what's on top of their library now. Is it charm? I think I like getting Omegas of the Moon in play here. I chose not to use Counterbalance's ability. Interesting. So we could just give ourselves a new grip so that probably favors us slightly all right let's just send this because we get to gas all the way back up and we've got some big haymakers whereas our opponent is kind of locked under this chalice they do have a teferi that can bounce the chalice all right we've got a force of will out of our opponent's hand there's no point holding up a is it charm when there's a teferi in play if they want to bounce the chalice we do get to kill that teferi but if they bounce the chalice they get to unlock that Swords in their hand. Okay, they just want to get rid of the Magus. Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Okay, our opponent's on, like, a pretty old-school looking build. Like, all these cards that our opponent's played, you would not be, have been surprised to have seen this, like, eight years ago or whatever. Or however long ago this card came out. It's probably longer than I think. Alright. We're a little bit behind here. A couple of blind flips on this counterbalance have really given us the business. Let's try. Yep, yeah, so Narset, not unexpected. This doesn't really do anything for us. I guess we can draw some cards. We might as well do this now before the Narset comes into play, but I think our opponent's just going to have us here. We took our chances trying to dodge the blind flip on the counterbalance, and we failed. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, none of this is particularly helpful. I guess we'll keep the chalice and we can jam a chalice on two and slowly take our opponent off of things but they are just so far ahead with what they've got on board right now they show us uh, a more expedient win condition other than jace or if they just start going up with the jace then we can probably pack this one up all right they got a fourth theolingus kicking around they have the red source to cast it that's the thing for next turn most likely dak faden doesn't look great into to fairy, uh, sorry, not to fairy, to, to into the Nasa here. Right, we're going to try and cast this Chalice of the Void, where X equals two. Our opponent does just have like the sort of semi miracles lock here. 
If they find the red source to cast the Fortheolingus, then we can just scoop this one up. Because we'll be dead almost immediately. And they got a Force of Will over there. Another Nasa. Sure, why not? And we got a very full grip of cards there. We're getting to see a lot more of our opponent's deck. Yeah, Supreme Verdict, that's not a surprise. Like full on, like Jess Guy, Planeswalker Control from back in the day. Hull Breacher. This is a real card. I'm going to play this Dak Faden first. And the Hull Breacher is slightly better on this board. Counterspell. We know they've got a Force of Will in hand. Alright, they've got a Force of Negation as well. Let's get this Hull Breacher in while I know our opponent doesn't have the counterbalance on three. Now, the problem here is our opponent can just Jace bounce this. Supreme Verdict, sure. That works too. I think we can probably scoop this one. It's not going to be fun watching this person beat me down slowly. Uh, so what do I like the look of here? I guess they've got some scary permanents. But I quite like the Force of Negation. Trinisphere will help us resolve stuff and sort of ruin our opponent's cantrip. So I think we don't want to keep that. The Izzet Charm looks pretty bad here. Which isn't really a massive surprise. An early Magus of the Moon can definitely like swing a game. So I wouldn't mind having one of those in. That's probably all the changes we're making. Uh, we could play Blood Moons over these Izzet Charms. But I like the ability to Spell Pierce. Even if it costs us more mana. Um, okay, we can keep this. That's going to turn. I would like to get Surveil Land, but probably just going to get... Uh, it's kind of awkward, isn't it? If we want to keep our City of Traders around. But we don't have to keep our City of Traders around. So we can probably just Surveil Land here. That's Sweet Valley. I think that is an above average draw. Let's put that on top of our library. Right, let's just jam this. If this works, our opponent basically doesn't get cast spells for a couple of turns. So this will get an answer if they have one in hand right now. Which means maybe we can stick one of our other things. Like, Magus isn't going to be amazing against our opponent's decks, but it is a creature that can pressure Planeswalker, so I think it is better than the Izzet Charms. If Izzet Charms could deal two damage to anything, then I'd be more inclined to play them. All right, they've got Hydroblast in. That's not a surprise either. And what have we got here? Another Trinosphere. Well, they didn't like the first one. A Brainstorm. Are we in? We are in. I don't think I want to play a land out here. Alright, so we've got some movement over there from our opponents. All basics, though. But Grey Ogre is where we need to be here. Alright, so they've got a Teferi. We're going to bounce our Trinosphere, most likely. A Fury. Do we want to kill this Teferi right away? I think I would rather try and get this whole Breacher down. Again, I don't think we want to play a land here. We've just got a bunch of 3-drops. And if we play the, the land, it takes us further away from Fury anyway. We could have pitched Fury to kill this, but we might be able to use this to hit this and maybe a Narset or something. We're going to see a Pyroblast, I believe. Yeah, our deck has opened itself up to all the blasts from opponents. We're in a slightly awkward bind. If we play this, we don't get to we don't get to crack our fetch land for a blue source, which is a bit awkward. But this gets us towards Fury in a better way. And if this gets countered, that's fine too. I imagine they just don't care about this and can just clean up in whatever way they see fit. Which will play out our land. This way, if our Megas of the Moon attacks into the Teferi, we get to shrink it. If they kill our Megas, then we get to make a, a Fury which can eat this up. A counterbalance. Yeah, that's a little bit rude. Let's get this down. Attack Teferi. No removal spell. Alright, let's try and Trinosphere. This stops them from cantripping into answers quite as easily. Build a Scalding Tarn. That's a mountain opponent. So if they plus the Teferi, then we can finish it off next time with Magus. They've shown us they're not removing our Magus anytime soon. We're working very hard, and it feels like that can all just come unstuck in an instant. Four mana. Meltdown. Just to blow up the Trinosphere. Alright, that's acceptable. Let's see if we can finish off that Teferi. Oh, look at that. Excellent draw. Alright, we got rid of the Teferi. We can Petty Theft, but we can't uh, play the Borrower as a threat. So I think we're just going to stay the course here. 
Oh wow, well, now we can play Borrow. I was going to say we play the Fury as a threat, but now we don't have to. We can just play the Borrow as a threat. That should be a okay. The Fury is quite a clean answer to pretty much all Planeswalkers. Lavinia. Sure. Let's get Rose and Borrower down. Let's see what's on top of our opponent's library. Right, they're brainstorming. So it could well be a three drop in the very near future. Does this mean that we jam the Fury, kill the Lavinia, attack for two? That's certainly an option. Whilst our uh, Blood Moon in effect is in play, our opponent can't shuffle away these brainstorms. Choose not to use the ability. I don't really want to play into Supreme Verdict in a big way here. So I think we'll just play our Ancient Tomb and a Bash for three. Because our opponent... I guess our opponent doesn't have Supreme Verdict mana, actually. And we should have played the Fury first, but... There we are. Just going to be a Hydro Blast on our Magus. It is. That unlocks their fetch lands to shuffle away that brainstorm. It also means they can go and get a white source here so they can cast a Supreme Verdict. Yep, coming in with a Lavinia, that makes sense. So one problem we have now is if our opponent has a Mystic Sanctuary in their deck and we play this Fury, they just immediately put the Force of Will on top and then we're in trouble because our Fury will get countered and they'll have a Force of Will for the next thing. I think we're better to wait and see if they put like a brainstorm or something on top with their flooded strand. Is it a fairy? A prismatic ending, sure. Maybe they don't have the Mystic Century. I think we're kind of priced into playing this Fury next turn anyway now. Because what else have we got going on? Chalice of the Void. This will stop Pyroblast and things and also check the top of their library. Pyroblast. That does not counter our challenge. So this stops a bunch of things. Let's play this. That's fine. I'll just save a few life points while we're here. So they can go and put a Force of Will on top. Yeah, that's what they're doing. I suspected that might happen. So now the next spell we have also doesn't get through. We've got a reasonable amount of life. And our opponent isn't clocking us too quick. But they can just pull away with a single Planeswalker at any point. We need to just keep drawing gas here. Uh, Trinosphere is kind of not great here, but I think we're still playing it. So we know they're drawing a blank. That's good news. They also know they're drawing a blank. Are they going to shuffle? They are going to shuffle. We're just down to six life points. Wasn't really in the market for a land there, so we just have to pass. So we get beaten down by this little Lavinia. A Force of Will. That's a spell we can cast. Triumph of St. Catherine. This is worth Force of Willing. It cost them three to miracle this one. Power of Trinosphere. Right, let's point our Force of Will at it. Our opponent can Force of Will back. They've got a count spell on top of their library. They didn't fancy it. We've got nothing over here. Just going to get beaten down by a little 2 2 hate bear. But they can always just draw. For Theolingus and just end us. Volcanic Island. Two damages. Got a couple more turns. Sure, we'll just pass. We've drawn a lot of land this game. We only run 21, I think. Something like that. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's 24. Even so, we have drawn mostly land this game. Now, our opponent still obviously has four cards in hand. Some of them are probably one drops that they can't cast. It's going to be an ending. No, nope, maybe not. What have we got? That's coming cool time. We should have brought in our extra fury just for more threats, actually. Did we board enough fury? We did not board enough fury. We should have boarded in the one fury there. That was a mistake. You know, it's not going to matter if we drew not, draw nothing but like seven, eight lands in a row. We finally drew a spell. I guess we'll cast a spell. We've got a lot of bad cards to throw away. There's the force. It's a count spell. Nothing but lands over here. So the first game, we lost on the back of a blind flip counterbalance, which, you know, is going to happen sometimes. 
We we did say we're go not going to try and counter the counterbalance. We're just going to assume that we can try and play around it with three drops instead of all these little cantrips and stuff. And it didn't get there. And that is a little bit unfortunate. But if we did fight over it, our opponent showed us they had a force as well. So we probably weren't getting very far with that anyway. Nevertheless, we are 0-1. The second game we just got ruined. We just drew Lance. But we're playing a deck. I guess we do have a bit more selection than you'd expect from like a prison style deck. But we just couldn't beat what our opponent was doing there. Especially not like this. Let's go to round two. Right, we're up against the Yorion strategy for round two. And we're on the play. Um, well, I will keep this. This is a slightly annoying one. But I think we have to decide what we're playing here. I think it's just the mountain. Because we want to play Omegas with the moon on turn two. Normally when I see an opponent go mountain and then not play anything. I assume they're going to be more towards like paint. Okay, so it might be black white taxes here. So our Magus should be fine as long as we don't get griefed right now. Right, that's not what's happening. Good. Maybe this just shuts the door on our opponent completely. Maybe it does. Next to nothing. Solitude is the card our opponent's going to play. It makes our Magus a little bit weaker. We're a couple of turns away from playing Khan. We don't really want to show our opponent other colours. But I don't think we want to play out. Oh, Ancient Tomb's interesting. I was going to say, we don't really want to show our opponent the other colour, but we also don't want to play out this City of Traitors yet. Um, so I guess we'll just play out Scalding Tarn. And then next turn we can start doing the Khan thing. A Marsh Flats. Sure. A Grief pitching opposition. Alien. This is good. This is going to take our Khan, unfortunately. Which is our plan to kind of get back into this well not get back into this game but actually win the game because I don't think 2-2 two, two beats is going to take us as far as we need right, so now I've seen our hand we may as well play out a Volk and go attacks so then now we have a force of will so we should not just F6 even though we don't have any way of actually doing anything with it Cavern of Souls it doesn't get to name anything because it's a mountain Yorion to hand is it charm is it useful? No. Well, I guess it's a blue card for Forcible. That's not nothing. But yeah, trying to make the Magus early on is kind of detrimental in the fact that it means we don't have access to blue mana quite often. Ether Vial. This one cannot be allowed to happen. We don't win the game if they have an Ether Vial ticking up. Is our opponent Esper Vial and they have Forcibles of their own? That pause makes me think maybe yes. But we haven't seen any blue lands yet. So it could be like black white scam. Like scam slash taxes. Um, okay. Let's just make things more awkward for our opponent. Our opponent knows that we have in hand now. So we might as well get our F6 value. And enjoy it. Six more turns of our rubbish man beating down. And we're there. Okay. They played a three mana chrome mox. To get some white mana. So they're out of jail. Provided what they need is white mana, which is going to be their main removal colour for things like plows and solitudes and stuff. So I have to imagine, all right, three mana, four mana. A seasoned dungeoneer. That is the biggest thing on the board and probably just solos this game on its own now. We need to draw a fury. If we draw a fury, then I think we win the game. If we draw a brazen borrower, that's acceptable. All right, so now they've got their other basic as well. So, I'm not feeling amazing. God, we do love drawing nothing but lands. We'll play the city here. We're not attacking with our guy. But if they attack, we get to attack and take the initiative back. Which isn't going to be the most helpful, but it will get us our other blue source. So we could do Brazen Borrow as an actual threat. If we draw it, but we just love drawing lands. I just check the list and we've got 24 lands, which is kind of what you'd expect from this. And we're not got any chrome moxes or spirit guides or any of that jazz. We are just on the good old fashioned 24 actual real lands. Sure, we're going to take an enormous chunk of our life total. And then they have exactly 11 damage for next turn. Cool. Ravenloft Adventurer. Uh, Fury's not good enough anymore. Uh, Khan. Khan is good enough. Khan into Ensnaring Bridge. That puts us to six. So we need we need to draw our Khan here. That is not Khan. 
Yep. Like, we locked our opponent down, but again, we just drew nothing but lands. So, what, one, two, three, four, five spells, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he drew twice as many lands as spells, despite having twice as many lands, uh, twice as many spells and lands. Like, what are you going to do? Uh, I think Fury looks good against our opponent's creature deck. Foam Macabre is an interesting one. We might be able to mess with our opponent. Our opponent's just going to fetch basics quite aggressively now, so I don't, I don't think Blood, like, Megs of the Moon plan is going to be the best here. So I think if we get rid of those, we could have some meltdowns in for things like Aether Vial. And I imagine our opponent has as a Saga in the deck as well. Do you want Frame of Carb in case they're doing reanimate shenanigans? Or are we just going to try and hit that with counter spells and stuff? And Chalice? Yeah, I think that's fine. Turn 1 Chalice, turn 2 Trinisphere. I guess we can keep this. It kind of isn't far away from doing some pretty gross things. Dak Faden can be useful against some of what our opponent's up to if we draw one of those down the line. Channel. So here we're going to see a little bit of tension where we have a three drop but requires two coloured pips. Which might be difficult to get going. Yep. So they're prioritising getting something that can grab a basic. So I think we are just getting a volcanic here that just gives us better draws in future. And we will try and shut our opponent down for another turn. If they have Wastelands and they just Wasteland us, then once again, we'll be wearing the frowny face. All right, are they going to get a Surveil Land? Or are we going to get a Basic? I mean, this means they have another Fetch Land in hand. That's what it says to me. An Ancient Tomb. Our opponent gets to play something. It's a Charming Prince. So this is something we can remove if we can find the tool the the land to do so uh two on the bottom of that scry that's something at least right we need a colored source not a colored source so what does this mean for us does this mean we're playing khan i think we plus on our trinosphere and we just hold it up as a blocker and then next turn if we draw a land we can play the lattice and try and lock our opponent out we have a card on four, so we can take one hit from the Charmer Prince, and then we're just going to have a 6-6 six, six to defend. And at our ledger, we can blow our opponent up. It's a strategy. We didn't find the land. This will cost us three. Do I want to pitch cast this Fury? We don't have a land that we can go and fetch with our Khan. We could go get a Walking Ballista. Is that even good here? I think we're just going to... Animate our Trinosphere. And then... I feel there's a Bowmasters in our future. I think... Pay three for this. And then we're going to exile a card. Hard to say which of these is actually better in this spot. Now, this is the cheaper removal spell. But this does more things. We'll get rid of these at Charm. Just take this out. And we're in a similar pattern to our last turn, except this time we have a Khan on 7 and our opponent doesn't have a Charming Prince. So once again, if we can find the land, drop the Lattice, we can try and win. They have a Bowmaster at the end step, they did not fire one off. There is a Scrubland. So Solitude is the thing they could cast here. Putting Yorion to hand. Okay, can we draw the land? So we've been drawing a lot of lands and now we actually want to draw one. We can't draw one. What is this? Ah, oh, dear. All right, let's go and get something with Khan this time. I'm mean, going to get the coating and start stripping away our opponent's permanents. That seems reasonable to me. So in our opponent's upkeep, we can turn off one of their lands. It's probably the Ancient Tomb, just to give them less raw mana. This will constrict them to one spell a turn. Okay. What is your one spell for this turn, opponent? Imagine if we could draw a land. Alright, our opponent is given up because we've got the Khan lock in at them. Because this underneath the Trinity is pretty strong. So, plus one win for Khan there. I'll take it. I think we're just happy to go right back in again. And hopefully it will come together. This opening hand is very slow and does very little. So we are going to be throwing this one right back. Uh, this hand is asking an awful lot of our poor little Khan. 
and there's a lot of ancient tombs here. But if we find any blue source, we can really ball. All right, I'm reluctantly going to keep this one. My opponent hasn't showed a lot of their deck being quick, so I think we've got a little bit of time to develop here. Although we have been shutting them out with chalices. But we can hold breach uh, untapped days on doing at some point. All right. The grief is hitting us. Is it going to get reanimated as well? And they can take like Khan and Hole Breacher here. This means that Days Undoing might just be uh, let's go back up to seven sort of card, which is fine if that's what we need it to be. Oh, it took the Khan. That's interesting. I'm going to have another bite of our hand. Chromox. So two pitch spells so far on their first turn. Pest control. Yep, so they've got a mox attached to both the colours. Oh, the reanimating, having a second bite. This is definitely going to take the whole breacher. So this does incentivize. Oh, they've taken days on doing. Oh. Surprised. Okay, let's play a chalice for one. So we've got a few turns before we really need to find something. But any sort of blue land is good or spells that are red. Khan would be nice into their chrome mox. Putting Yorion to hand. A meltdown. Well, this is awkward, isn't it? I'm going to rather shut them off of a colour. Or off of both colours. Uh, I think I have to do that. This also costs us two life. Which does change the clock. But it stops our opponent. Oh, I hate this play. Uh, I think it's worth it. They showed us they didn't have another land. Not a fan of that one. Okay. Thundering Falls. Well, that's blue mana for next turn. And maybe gives us something useful. Khan, the great creator. Sure. We can probably do some in Snowbridge stuff. And hide behind that. So we take three, we go to seven. We take four. No, we only have to take two, I guess. We go to five. And then we untap and we play the bridge. It's a plan. So we could go and get a walking ballista here. But I think we should just get the bridge. So they're probably going to attack Khan rather than us. So that buys us another turn. And then we can deploy the bridge and the hull breach. We can go to one. That leaves us dead to Orcish Bone Masters. We only have one more Khan in our deck. Kind of one of our main win conditions. They're attacking us. This is going to shut, up, shut off our ancient tomb. Yeah. That's pretty solid. I guess we want to land. We did not find a land. Um, what do we have in our sideboard? No. Yeah, we just got nothing. Our deck just kind of bottomed out pretty hard there. Like the grief, like we got fully scanned on turn one and our hand just lost all of its juice. Um, yeah, maybe we're supposed to bottom the Khan there. If we'd have bottomed the car, we would have drawn into that, which at least kills the grief. So, yeah, a little bit of anti synergy with the meltdown as well. Just not quite coming together there. Oh, well, we did put a game win on, but we just need to get a match win at some point. Let's go to round three. This hand is pretty slow. I think we can do better. We want some fast mana. This does not have fast mana. But it has more interaction stuff going on. I think I will keep this one. I'm probably going to get rid of the Trinisphere. That does less if it's coming on turn three. A Yavimaya. Right, being able to shoot stuff for two might be quite useful. Elvish Reclaimer. That's the sort of thing I'd like to shoot. But we don't quite have the mana to do that. Welcome back, Trinisphere. Let's play a Mountain. An Urza Saga. Well, we've got an answer to that. If we can draw a land. Mox Diamond. That's a pretty good one. I don't think it was worth playing the Chalice for zero when we can use it to stop things like crop rotation. Four, okay. Uh, that's pretty strong. That is pretty strong. We kind of need like a soul land so that we can put the blood that makes the moon in to kind of switch these two things off. They're still going to have a, like a bunch of power in play. So we can shoot this guy now. That's probably better than playing a Chalice right now. If we were on the play, this game goes quite differently. So there's a saga ticking. 
if they leave the night the relic will get untapped and what are we supposed to do all right apprentice a fan of the channel always lovely to see and you need to play in their deck so maybe they're going to make a few missteps here and there which is the sort of thing we might need to help us out you get bashed we are going to get bashed okay that's something i'll take that the lush portico going to make it even bigger put another land in even if we get the Magus down. All right, they've been the plow. As soon as we get the Magus down here, it might not be great for us. We can Dak Faden steal their Mox Diamond as well. Ancient Tomb, does that change anything at all here? I don't think it does. We don't have blue mana. Oh, I do not like the mana base on our deck. So we could go and we could steal the Mox Diamond and play a Chalice for one. That's kind of interesting. Take the Mox Diamond. Alright, I'm going to tap it so we don't get to make the thing we wanted, really. And then he's going to get another one. We'll probably buy ourselves a little bit of time if they attack our creature. Yeah, we, we didn't take two life for the Ancient Tomb. We were kind of banking on our opponent not making the token, which they were always going to do. So now they can do the trick where they make the token, put the tutor on the stack, and then sack it to the knight because they have Yavimaira in play. Our opponent's just doing more powerful things than we're doing, unless we have Megs of the Moon turn one, which we just don't have. But this is definitely where our sideboard can shine with an extra Fury and three more Blood Moon effects. So fingers crossed, this is one we can win from the sideboard. Maze of Earth, put the Lava's Boots on. This is what, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This will put me to one, unless they attack the, the DAC. Okay, one of them's coming at the DAC. That gives us a little bit of hope. Or does it, really? We could have been two more life healthier. Uh, so we can play Omegas. That guy can chub block, like here. And then we're dead to this. Yeah, we're just getting absolutely ruined there. Let's go to the sideboard. we got some powerful tools in the sideboard. So I would very much like a Fury... These meltdowns versus their saga constructs if they get into play seem good. More blood moons, please. How about yet more blood moons? What do I not like here? I think the Prismari command feels a little bit slow. I'm not... How do I feel about Trinity? Trinity is one of those things that's great on the play, but isn't always going to be doing what we want. Chalice doesn't really line up well with meltdown either. There's a fair bit of anti-synergy in our deck, is what I'm discovering. Borrower is good for blinking out the old 2020. I like Prismari Command just as a thing that does extra stuff with Hull Breacher. Is it Charm on the play will kill their little friend? Maybe we don't want these. As weird as that is. Something along these lines. Just make our meltdowns feel a little bit less precarious. Um, This is a turn to Megs of the Moon. I will keep that. I'll begin with an Ancient Tomb. But again, we're finding a problem with having Blood Moon effects and also trying to get our Hull Breach into play. We haven't really been drawing many fetch lands, actually. We've got eight of those. But even so, if we're fetching, what are we fetching? If we want to cast our Magus, we can't really... Yeah, if we want to cast our Magus, we can't really get the mana for the Hull Breach anyway. Let's just play this Ancient Tomb pass. If they waste down this, it's less of a problem than them waste down our only colored mana source. Once upon a time. We didn't show our opponent the Megs of the Moon either. So hopefully they won't be expecting it. Sylvan Safekeeper. And there it is. Okay, let's see if we can shut our opponent off of spells. Big fan of our opponent not having spells. This is where they play like Dark Depths and then Solitude us. That would be rather on the brutal side. Test the stage. Meltdown, that's not really the one we want. So we're in this spot again where we don't actually get to cast our spells and do the things we want to do. I think we do attack here, though. Feels like maybe some Chrome Moxes and not stop not playing Meltdown and having some Chrome Moxes might be a way to go here, especially if we're trying to like refill our hand with the draw seven. Our opponent correctly identifies that they're not blocking, so they should be attacking here. Another Magus of the Moon. I guess. Now we get to attack for a little bit more damage and they can't attack us back. Also, Magus doesn't die to 
force of vigor, which is really handy here. Barrow Downs. Paducah Bog. Okay. Khan the Great Creator. Well, that's another card we didn't get to cast. At some point, our opponent might have to block with their Sylvan Safekeeper. Ah, oh, they found a forest. It's all over now. If they have an Elvish Reclaimer, then they just go get their Reclaimer. And then they can fetch whatever they want. No attack with the Safekeeper. Is it Charm that doesn't do anything here? Our ability to draw the correct amount of lands and spells of this league has been somewhat worse than I would normally expect. We had two games where we drew nothing but lands, and now we and we've had two games where if we'd have drawn a land, we'd just win on the spot. So it's a Green Sun Zenith for three. It is. And this is not a creature we can tangle with lightly. Because they can sack as many lands as they want and make it big. So we're going to have to find some kind of solution here. Oh, we found a blue source. Does that change anything? Maybe. So we could play a Khan and start doing Khan things. Or we could play a Hole Breacher and then start doing Prismari Command. Taking out our opponent's hand and just getting loads of treasures. That seems quite good. So we're going to try that one out. This also allows us to hold the Prismari Command and the Is It Charm right now. We can't really kill their creatures due to the Sylvan Safekeeper. Okay, let's deploy a Merfolk. Another Mana Source. Sure, that's fine. We want to use a Prismari Command on their turn. Oh, we need to their draw steps, yes. We don't have to do that then. A Crop Rotation. We cannot counterspell this. Is this going to get them a Dark Depths? No, it's getting them a Plains. That makes some sense. So I would like target player to draw two cards, then discard two cards. Target player... Uh, we could deal them two damage, actually, as well. I quite like that. This would be a bad time for Assault of Plowshares. A Veil of Summer. That works. We still get the treasure to a treasure token, but we don't get to shred their hand. It is a blue spell. Okay, we kind of get to do a lot of stuff here. Because the powers of Dak Faden. Right, let's try and take two cards out of our hand. Okay. So we can jam a Khan here. How much matters is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This can make us some more treasure next turn. I don't think we need to do that just yet, actually. We can try and lock them out the following turn and just hold up double. Is it charm? So you've got a life in the lane with some interesting art. I don't think I've seen this one before. Right, they're attacking, presumably Raoul Zarek. We go to blocks. I think we block with Magus here. I'm not a big fan of this, but I think keeping our Raoul Zarek alive is important. Right, let's see if Dak Failing can do its work. If this works, we get to play Khan and Lattice. Okay. Get my sense Lattice. Cast a Lattice. All right, we got a Lattice Lock win. So what we probably do have to do next turn is block this with like a whole Breacher is fine at that point. And then we can just do a Meltdown and take out all the lands if we want to. That's not really necessary though. Uh, but we could do a Meltdown where X is three and we just blow everything up and then the Khan just activates our Might and Lattice and kills everything. Over, kills them over a few turns. So that worked out quite well. Would I like some more counter magic for things like... Uh, see, this meltdown is kind of an awkward one. I don't think we want the meltdowns. I've changed my mind on them, which means we probably do want the chalices back in. All right, I think we'll try this. I enjoyed the Dak Faden stuff. I think Dak Faden was looking pretty tasty. We've got the Magus. That's definitely something we want to be doing, so I guess we're going to keep this one. But we're in that awkward spot again where we can't get our land that we need... Cast the other spells in our hand. Right, so they're going straight for a Dryad Arbor here. So this is going to be a turn two Knight of the Reliquary is their plan. It's a pretty good plan. Polluted Delta. So we can slow ourselves down to make sure we actually get to play the game here. This is awful. I don't like this at all. We could just try a Scry Land. Okay, now with a Saga I definitely want to play this Magus. So I think we're going to 
get a scry now and hope we can scry towards a blue source here. Okay. I think we can afford to let this Sire start pumping our construct. Prismari command. We do not want you. Well, we're going to make the play that we have. See if we can box our opponent out. So we're going to be left with a forest and a 1-1 mountain. If they remove our Magus, then we get to play the game again with our spells. Otherwise, we're in that horrible spot where our deck doesn't really function. We're kind of blood mooning ourselves pretty hard. Once upon a time, they're just going to immediately find another planes. An Elvish Reclaimer, so they can cast that next turn. Now would be a great time to draw a blue land. One of our two islands, please. We did not draw one of our two islands. Who thought that would happen, eh? Okay, I think it's worth attacking for two here. Right, there's the Reclaimer. So this is just going to go and get them a planes next turn. Even a blue source. Like the, even one of our islands isn't looking great in this spot. Force of Will, though. That could certainly come in handy. Just attack. Our opponent wants to keep their Elvish Reclaimer alive. And it's not attacking next turn, so we don't need to try and block it either. Alright, so we can cast a Force of Will, pitching one of our many blue cards. A Sylvan Safekeeper. No, I can't allow this one. See, the problem with this one is it lets them pump up their Reclaimer. It also lets them dodge things like Fury, which is something that can turn this game around for us. We've kind of just locked ourselves out in an embarrassing fashion. Maybe we need a lot more basics in our deck. Okay, that's a good card. Khan. Let's see what they reclaim. I'm assuming it's going to be a Plains. A Dark Depths. Oh dear. That's slightly more terrifying, as it turns out. Uh, so yes to this. And we'll go and get ourselves an Ensnaring Bridge, I think. We got solitude right now. We're holding the guy back. Okay, they didn't have a solitude right now. There's a saga played and immediately died into the blood moon. They can put one damage on Khan here if we don't want this to die. Um, far makes the moon dies. Uh, then we minus this. Okay, yeah, so the Mages of the Moon dies, they get 2020. So we minus this, get a Liquid Metal Coating, play Liquid Metal Coating, turn this into an artifact, play Dark Fade and steal it. Sign me up. Secretly, we're a Dark Depths deck all along. Who would have thought? What was our opponent up to there? All right, they're copying to get another basic land. But that's not what this game is about anymore. I'm quite excited. Get an island. We'll crack this and get another island. Just in case we get another blood moon down the line. So play this. Play this mountain out. This allows us to play the whole reach as well if we need it. <laughs> I found a way to make a Marit Lage in our little deck. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right, let's go to round four. We've got to win on the board in a bit of an unconventional fashion, but the Blood Moons are pretty good, aside from the fact they locked us out pretty hard. Interesting. Okay, uh, there's definitely some deck building stuff we need to sort out at the end. Let's go to round four. All right, we're on the play, but our hand isn't actually great. I think we can do better. We want like one of our cool three drops or something like this to drop early. Uh, this hand doesn't feel exciting to me let's get something that excites oh lord that's terrible isn't it we're going to four cards oh, this hand just needs a land to function oh okay but gradually we're going to keep this one so we're going to get rid of this side of things and try and play the blue the blue combo to get back into the game like our opponent hasn't even, it hasn't even taken a turn yet and i'm talking about getting back into the game that's not usually a great sign Khan the Great Creator. Alright, that's pretty tasty. Then we're just going to nail this Trinisphere around a daze. This will either force our opponent to answer it, which will take an answer away from our Khan, or it will just slow the game down where we get to do our thing. A brainstorm, they're licking. 
We might just be able to lock them up with the lattice. Not the lattice. Well, actually, we could even do the lattice soon. I meant the, um, the, the coating. So our opponent probably doesn't get to play anything this turn. I'm not expecting an Ancient Tomb from our opponent. Right, so we get a free turn to just play a thing we want. I like that. So if we minus this, they could grief us and take the card out. So I'm just going to plus, plus this guy now with no targets. So that they can't grief away the liquid metal coating. And then next turn we can just coating, possibly lattice lock depending on how the board lies. But if we get like a grief going, if, it, like, if we get a grief into us and we lose our options, then I'm not going to feel amazing about that. All right, so our opponent's holding up some counter magic over there. All right, let's go for the coating and see what our opponent wants to do about it. Okay, that's pretty exciting. We get to shut off one of our opponent's lands in their upkeep. Can we have Bowmasters or something? Can put our card to one. But we got some other plays available to us in coming up turns. So this feels like we're doing something here. We didn't play out our land because we have five mana next turn if we don't play out. Oh, they would like to bounce our Trinisphere. Okay. Let's shut off one of these underground seas. Oh, they have an Entomb. That could be some pretty scary news for us. Although, if they don't have a counter spell, we do just get to steal whatever they put into play using Dak Faden. This is the part of the deck that I'm enjoying the most, if I'm being honest, the Dak Faden stuff. Animate dead. Sure. Sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. I guess we lose our Khan. Get rid of this Trinisphere. Oh wait, we don't have the mana for the Dak Faden, do we? That is an issue. Another Dak Faden. That's not the one, is it? So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That'll put us to one. And they have this coming in the turn after, but if we get to steal this. It's going to be tapped. Hmm. Okay. Not feeling good. Another Entomb, you say? Well, that feels pretty scary. A Grief. Uh, yeah, I think we'll probably call this one here. All right. We, we need some Graveyard Hate, because that was a little bit scary. Our opponent didn't have the most amount of basic lands. I think we might be able to cheese a game with a with a moot magus here. Uh, the Tormod's Crypt I think is still better in the sideboard. Chalices look great. Maybe you want this. Trinospheres look pretty good. I'm not convinced we're about this sort of stuff. That makes our pitch things worse, but we don't really need Furies here either. And gives us one more thing that comes back in. So I guess maybe one is it charm? Try something more along this lines. This hand is way too slow to achieve anything. All right, we have a little bit of interaction, but we don't have the mana underneath us. So this one isn't is a no-go either. Okay, I'll keep this. I don't think we can afford pitch cards here. Kind of want to have these lands going. Days I'm doing is graveyard hate. After a fashion. I think we're just playing out the the city here. I think we're trying to leverage it more. Do we want this? I don't think we do. Put into the graveyard. Alright. Wasteland. Okay. I can live with that. Got a scalding town on the go. In the wasteland. Oh, we're probably getting a basic island here. Immediately draw that. It's a bit awkward. Play the City of Traitors. We can chalice around a daze. Not that they have a daze available right now. This stops reanimate specifically, as well as all their cantrips and a bunch of other stuff. Force of Will pitching the brainstorm. I imagine our opponent's going to cycle a troll rather than wasteland us here. There it is. So we had the option there of wheeling, but our opponent might just end up with a troll in hand anyway. I think the chalice is just too high priority right there. No wasteland yet. Very odd. All right, let's play the thing we have. Makes the moon around days when you have no basic lands. Yep, you can brainstorm. Okay. 
We're in. Clock has begun. Splash for two. It's our opponent's turn. We've got a Brazen Borrower to interact. And maybe we can find a land and interact in other ways. Shut down a bunch of our opponent's interaction. Thing is, if they just find their basic swamp or a troll, then they can immediately uh, cast things like Animate Dead and put a troll into play, which will be big enough to win the race. It took the days I'm doing, which is intriguing because that's quite like to find them a troll or a source. Okay, we got nothing. We we'll just keep pecking away with our little wizard. Another chalice. I don't think having two chalices on one is going to matter here. We can loop through that with a Dak Faden at some point potentially. We can also maybe put on two down the line. That just shut our opponent out completely, I think. Drown on the lock. Good to know they're playing Drown on the lock. It's a good card. I'm going to take the Dak Faden here. They are. I would also take the Dak Faden. Do I want to play a Trinisphere? We might as well. It means if our opponent does break out, it's going to be hard for them to string together multiple things. And, you know, like in Tomb Reanimate, they might just have to reanimate like a troll, which is easier for us to deal with. So the original build of this that I started from had four islands in instead of two. Maybe we needed more islands in the deck. But even so, four doesn't feel like an enormous amount either. Oh, our clock just got bigger. All right. We got a game. Now we have to try and do that again. How will we go about doing that? What is our blue count for Force of Will? 17. That is not enough, is it? Trinisphere, I think, is looking less good when we're going second. I'll try something like this. We've seen the Dathy Voidwalker plan. I think they're more likely to be on the reanimate scene that we didn't have any like hard and fast graveyard hate going on. We're trying to make the game not be about that. Well, this is obviously a mulligan. It's got no lands. This has graveyard hate, and it has a powerful card in Mage of the Moon. We can also get both of our basics. This is graveyard hate too, but is slow. I think we get rid of the is it charm here. Sorry, not the is it charm. The days I'm doing because we can actually cast the is it charm. A wasteland. All right. Not happy. Let's just play a basic mountain. What are you going to do about that opponent? You're going to cycle a troll. Sure, you can cycle a troll. What are you going to do? Reanimate a troll. No, not even going to do that. Okay. I don't believe our opponent runs Stifle. I haven't seen it in the Rescaminator builds. Let's go our other island. Fair chance for one. This is something our opponent might fight over. I don't think we have to fight back over this. We can consider it. It's just a hard cast days. Um, I think we just let this go. I'd rather stick this Megas of the Moon, considering we've seen how powerful it can be in this matchup. Uh, so we could do the Megas of the Moon around a days with Force of Will. I think that is preferable, since our opponent isn't doing anything right now. It does risk our opponent drawing a fetch hand this turn. Or they drew a basic, so it's kind of irrelevant either way. Right, let's get our Thundering Falls and have a little look at the top of our deck. Volcanic kind of card in that can go into the graveyard. We don't need that for now. Sure, you can waste us. Let's jam Magus. Force pitching a tracker. We've got another one, so I don't think we're fighting over this. We can just untap and jam again. That also means our opponent doesn't have a Hydroblast. Which is good for now. Let's try it again. Drown in the lock. It is a drown in the lock. Three cards in our opponent's hand. Are we fighting over this makes the move? We can cut our opponent off of black if we do. I think that's worth fighting over. Okay, so now we've got Hole Breacher to cut off some cantrips next turn. There's a Misty. A Powder Keg. Sure. So I can go all the way to three and then kill our Magus. That's a slow, a slow uh, approach. This also deals with Chalice. So this is going to go up to three and then take out our Magus, I would imagine. 
Makes me not want to do things with our whole breacher, but we do have two of them, so maybe we fire one off if our opponent tries to cantrip. Right, we've got a pretty powerful couple of turns coming up. We will put this whole breacher end of turn and then days on doing. Because that's just uh, real gas right there. Now they will get to blow up our stuff afterwards. But we mind twist them and draw seven with a million treasures. Sure, you can cycle for a basic swamp, I imagine. There it is. The Maze of the Moon has outlived its usefulness. Right, they were F6 there. That's pretty good news for us, I think. This also removes their creature from the graveyard for the future as well. Alright. They can take out two of our things. We should have attacked first. We missed two points of damage there. I was too excited to do the thing. And missed two points of damage. So we've got 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can lattice lock our opponent next turn. With Force of Will back up. Right, we get five in. Not blowing the keg, interesting. Okay. One, two, three, four. Khan. Yep, we lose our two guys. Your force is not going to work, I'm afraid, opponent. This could be hard cast force. Nope, just another under six sewers. Alright, we managed to get a match win with the lattice lock again, so. Khan has been putting in a real shift, and I've been enjoying the Khan stuff. We actually got to do the whole Breacher thing, which is kind of the first time it's really managed to do very much. So that was... Well, actually, no, that's not true. We did have it doing some stuff with Dat Faden earlier. But that puts us at 2-2, two and two, so we've got the final round to see if we can get the positive record. Uh, this hand is very slow. I think we have to mulligan it. We're in a similar spot, and I don't really want to go any lower in this world of scan that we live in. I think we're going to say, okay, probably ditch... Command. I think that's the lower impact. Like, is it charm is uh, a cheaper piece of interaction. So we actually get to place it on turn two. So we're not getting rid of our only two drop. So it has to be one of our three drops. And I think the uh, prismatic command, whatever it's called, is the least impactful out of what we have here. Like, whole breach, you can sort of really ruin a lot of decks. And obviously, we have the combo here of these two cards. Just a tropical item from our opponent. We've got an Izzet Charm. We can draw and discard if we're desperate to get another land, which I think we kind of are. But we have to hold it up in case our opponent's got something like... Um, are we bothered by Beanstalk? Hmm. This is Bowmaster's time. I don't really want to just jam this into Bowmaster's. Okay. It didn't fire it off. And now you now know that we're missing lands. So there is a wasteland. Right, let's draw two cards, discard two cards. We can fight over Baymaster if we have to. Not a fan, but we will do if we have to. Uh, we can get rid of this and probably the Khan for now. Which looks like Beanstalk or Wither Bloom Command. It's Wither Bloom Command. And Drain Life for two here as well. I think with Beanstalk we're going to try and fight it in other way. Oh, this is a big hit if our opponent... Yeah, okay. Let's just slam this. This might just shut our opponent out of the game completely if it resolves. Got days as well? No, okay, we're just in. So our opponent might not be able to play the game anymore. We are playing like a big, bomby prison deck, so we are going to be trying to cheese our opponent out quite often. So I'm A-OK -okay playing into that. Let's make another one. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Mystic Sanctuary is just a mountain. Polluted Delta. We don't get to cast a spell in our hand, sadly. But we've been running into that all day. Four, if we get this Khan in. If we get this Khan in, then we're all good. We really speed up our win condition. Uh, we just get a coating, I think. So even if they do manage to get rid of our Maguses, we can still just strip away their lands. All right, we got a cheese. Let's add some more cheese. Uh, okay, so I would very much like this. It looks like our opponent's playing bug beans. So we're gonna want these blood moon effects. Other than that, like fury is, you know, it's gonna be, we're gonna be able to take out a Boma just with it at some point. The force of negation also feels pretty reasonable here. So we have to decide what we're doing about bow masters. I like Trinisphere. Our opponent's trying to cast lots of small spells. I think Prismari Command is a little on the weak side here, but it does kill Bowmasters. Chalice is not that exciting when they've got all these Witherbloom commands. 
and they're going to be boarding in force of figures. So maybe we'll try it without those. How do I feel about this opener? We've got some counter magic, but it just doesn't really do anything. Nope, we're going to go to five. Okay, we will keep this one. I'm going to pitch this Brazen Borrower and I guess one Magus. Magus is a big high impact card for this matchup. So even though we don't have the mana to cast it right now, the majority of the lands in our deck will cast this. All right, our opponent's fetching basics. They might only have the one and they're going to run like two Hydroblast. But with Namesticker Goblin being banned now, maybe they'll have less Hydroblast in their sideboard so we can be more likely to get a cheese in. This member is also a thing our opponent might have access to as well. All right, maybe we're just on the whole breach plan today. I can live with that. That's going to be our answer to the Beanstalk. Right, pass. Hold up our hull breacher. See if we can nail our opponent somehow. Another Beanstalk. Well, they're either going to use a Force of Will in response, so they're at least not drawing two cards off of it, or we're going to shut down their engine. I guess we could have a daze here. Uh, there it is. Okay. Now I think we're in trouble. We do still have another hole breacher though. There is potential. Flow strand. What are we going to see here? Another one? Now can we hole breacher? They can't daze this one. We're going to see a brainstorm looking for a force. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. If we can shut down the beanstalk engine, then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a happier spot. Can have triple days. That would do it here. I would leave them with like no permanents and play other than beanstalks, but that's probably still fine knowing how the beanstalk deck operates. Oh, our hull breach is in. Let's get some treasure. Okay, so this also tells our opponent they don't have, tells us that our opponent doesn't have a counter spell right now. So I think you would counter spell that there. So we need to find a way to leverage this. One, two on this one. Let's get this Magus in. Shut them off of two colours. And now we have Is It Charm that can maybe defend us. Spell Pierce, you know, could be enough. Or Rune Snag, I suppose, for you magic boomers like me out there. It's not quite Rune Snag because I can't hit anything, but still. It's a two mana soft tax too. Are we just going to get the cheese out here? A Hydro Blast. That's unfortunate, but we don't get to defend on that one. Oh, please tap something. Yeah, there we go. Orcish Bowmasters. This isn't one we actually get to protect against. Us. So ping our Hull Breacher. And they go to blocks, and then we kill the token here. I guess we could borrow it. Am I paying two life? Probably not. But if our opponent draws any additional cards, that would be a thing that I'd very much like to happen. Because that would leave this up if our opponent draws extra cards. Okay, so we get to keep our whole breach from board, which is an important one. Our opponent can just put a Merc Tide into play and say, well, I don't care if you get three treasures, I've got a Merc Tide. And that probably will win the game. The other Beanstalk triggers are not optional either. Surveil. Just uh, drown the lock or... No, that won't do enough. Shouldred's Edict. Well, I guess we lose our only creature. I think our opponent has done enough this game. But I think this is only game two, so we can come right back at it on the play. A Ponder. Yep. We can play a Borrower. It's certainly not free because the life there is pretty significant. It's what we have. We can shoot down this Bowmaster later on if we need to. Right, let's see how badly this goes for us. We've got another Bowmaster. A Brainstorm. Can we just allow that one? So they're doing that now when we don't have Hull Breacher that we can play because we tapped out of blue. There's the Orcish Bowmasters. We say no to this. Because it's a seven. Like The clocks are pretty close with our creatures here. We do technically have the better clock and we do have an answer. 
So I don't think we want to be days on doing just yet. We're going to hold up this Is It Charm. Don't really want to give my opponent a full grip when just one of those cards all of a sudden becomes a recall. And it just goes way, way badly for us there. Uh, another Rockish Bowmasters is pretty bad news. Okay. We also don't want to use the, uh, the days I'm doing while they have a Bowmaster in play. Many reasons why that goes poorly for us. Mystic Sanctuary, they're going to go get like Ponder or something here. Depending on how secure they feel. They could get a Brainstorm, they could get another removal spell. Yeah, they've gone for a removal spell. They're just going to put us away with the creatures they've got. Our Ancient Tomb also doing some of the work for them. City of Traitors. I think we play that out for the purposes of Khan. Just having more mana. So... Khan in Snowbridge doesn't really save us yet. We could Khan Walking Ballista. Magus of the Moon. Let's cast it. I think our opponent only has the one basic in their whole deck. Okay, the Shoulder's Edict is coming down. But this gives us the chance to do Hull Breacher stuff if we draw it. Oh, they've got a Murderous Cut, have they? Yikes. Well, this game is probably over. Our opponent's turn. Right, take two. More card selection from our opponent. Ugh, Merktite. All right, I think we can probably call this one a day now. All right, we're on the play. Do I want chalices on the play? That just that gives us a turn one play, which I think is important here. Do you like the Trinospheres? I'm less sold on these. Uh, is it charms? Let's try something like this. All right, we're on the play. What does our hand do? It makes a Magus of the Moon on turn two if we don't get wastelanded. Okay, I don't really want to get wastelanded. Let's hope they don't have it. I think the upside of this hand is just too good to throw away. No wasteland. Step one has been achieved. Carpet of flowers. Okay, we'll allow that to happen. And sure, you can add zero mana. We're not going to have an iron in the very near future. We don't get to protect this with our force because it's the wrong force. All right, we're in. Let the cheesing commence. So we're just going to use our blue cards for force of negation type stuff here. And hopefully never have an island. Which is something we've been very good at doing this league, so... you got to believe. Play this. We'll jam this. Trinosphere. Just slow our opponent's roll right down. Kind of wish we had another Fury in there, just another beta now. Cycling Elorian revealed. Very rude. So we're kind of just playing around the one Hydroblast. But we don't get to defend against that because of our own Trinosphere here. So we have the Hydroblast and snap off right now. That's going to be good. Now we have another Blood Moon. That they can't counter spell. We get one mana here. If that's the thing they're interested in doing anything with. It was not. We could go get our Island, but that's just going to turn on our opponent's carpet. So I think we just Thundering Falls first. Get a tiny bit of selection. Uh, another Blood Moon is probably not where we need to be right now. But I think we'll put it on top still, just in case. If they've got a second Hydroblast, we can at least say no to it. Carpet of Flowers. We got another one. Alright, we're playing this old game, are we? So now they, they probably don't have a land to fetch with this the strand. I could be mistaken. They now get enough mana to cast something in the second main phase. Maybe we're supposed to hit that carpet early on. We can't kind of spell that because of our own Trinosphere. A Blood Moon. This does resolve. We just need to win with things like Khan. The original build of this had the four mana Chandra. I think that was before when that build was out it was before the Chandra got nerfed I think. Uh, where they change it so you can't ping planeswalkers with the plus ability. A ponder here, we can't do anything about that. Okay, can we find a win condition somewhere? A chalice for one, or we can hold up our force of negation. I think I'd rather 
hold up the force of negation here. Because basically we're only worried about another hydroblast. See a cycle here. Now force of negation only works in our opponent's turn as well. Whereas if we go shields down for this chalice, maybe they counter it. Three mana. It's a hydroblast. We'll say no to that. I don't believe our opponent's running more than three hydroblasts. They probably have a force of vigor in their deck though. Uh, X is currently one. Okay. Resolving Chalice under Trinosphere is always a fun one. So we're trying to win somehow before our opponent gets Force of Vigor. I don't believe they have a second island here. If they do, then they're going to win this game very easily. Hedge Maze. There we go. Because if they have a second island, they can cast Mertide Regent and just beat us with it. And we don't really have an answer for that right now. Our turns are very easy of just pass. Cast what we draw, pass at the moment. If we can cast it. Sure, we'll play land. Let's get our F6 value. We're five minutes ahead on clock as well. I don't really want it to come down to that. I'd like to find a Khan and just put this one to bed. One, two, three, four, five, six. And put this on two. Alright, <laughs> our opponent didn't want to have to play against all that. So against better odds, uh, <laughs> against the odds, we finished with a positive record with this one, which I was not sure was going to happen. We worked pretty hard for it, and we basically won mainly through cheesing our opponent out, but that's what we do with a prison deck. So let's talk about the list. So I think there's some fundamental problems with our deck. As you can probably imagine, a lot of it is the mana base. So the original build that we worked from had four islands in, and I think I had one land that is a basic island cycler which i don't think is really where we want to be i will also say that the format now is in a place where if you're playing these sorts of effects like these big like ending the game type things you want to be able to reliably or we're well, not necessarily ending the game but like slowing the game down gratuitously you want to be able to play them on turn one and our deck cannot do that we can play a chalice but that's the only thing we're playing on turn one and then we're just kind of turtling up behind forces. We can't do a turn one Magus, for example, which can just win games straight away. Or a turn one Trinisphere, which does a very similar thing. Which makes me think that we should be taking a leaf out of the regular prison decks that run a bunch of fast mana. So they're going to have some Chrome Moxes, maybe Lotus Petals, maybe Simian Spirit Guide. So just a bunch more mana in the deck to try, try and power these things out. Now, the problem with doing that is that's going to come at a cost of some slots. So, like, a mono-red prison deck runs 30 mana sources, usually. So it has 22 lands, including double face cards, four chrome moxes, and four spirit guides, or lotus petals, if we're going into another colour. So that means we'd have to lose six cards from this deck to, make, to, to fit these things in. Now, there's definitely some cards that look a little bit suspect to me. Uh, I'm kind of looking at some of these things and maybe the Furies. So there's definitely some places we could cut to add that mana in so that we can actually do this on turn one. But that means we also want to have more copies of these things we're trying to do on turn one. I think that would actually help with the mana. Now, if we're doing that, it kind of incentivizes us to have these Prismaria commands because they are really good to slap underneath the Chrome Mox if that's what we're doing. So maybe we'd be cutting like this selection of things and just hoping that the Khan does enough to turtle us. Uh, but then we're also probably cutting a Borrower for another Magus. And then we run into that problem again of we play Force of Will, we also play Trinisphere. These are not the best friends you've ever seen. Now it did work out alright actually. They were kind of like we had either or a lot of the time and that was enough. So maybe it, it is still fine. But it feels like we are trying to cram an awful lot into this deck. And it doesn't quite fit as well as you'd like. So the other thing we can do is if we are running Lotus Petals and Chrome Moxes, we can change up our mana base a little bit and have some more basics in there instead of these fetch lands. So we can trim on these a bit. And that would also help put some more non-basics, uh, put some basics into the deck. So we're slightly more likely to draw them. And we also have Chrome Oxes, which can kind of get us out of a bind. But if we're pitching a bunch of cards to do what we're trying to do with our deck, 
it means that we're going to end up with a lot less resources, which is fine. But if we're trying to do pitch cards, I don't think we can run these things and Chrome Moxes in our deck. I just don't think that's a viable strategy. So I think it's either or. Either we're trying to do like the big Magus of the Moon and Hull Breacher, Trinisphere stuff and just windmill our opponent with Days Undoing. Or we're trying to have this sort of like permission-y style thing here with like Force of Wills and play a slightly slower game. And I think given the speed of the format, I'm not a big fan of playing the slightly slower game. However, there is something in this deck that I do really like. And we showcased it beautifully in one round. And that is Dak Faden's Stealing Artifacts. That is absolute chef's kiss of magic right there. And Khan is a quite a good way of facilitating that. I think that is there is a different deck, which I did discuss with the donor about, using Dak Faden in a slightly more uh, gratuitous fashion that we're definitely going to get on the channel at some point, I'm sure. But whether or not that's where it belongs here, like we're trying to do too many things in a deck where we need to have the reliable stuff underneath us to do it. Like the games we won were basically because most of the time because we just cast Blood Moon. That was why we won the three rounds we won for the most part. And it kind of makes a lot of this deck redundant. Like we did get some wins with Khan, but a lot of those wins were because the Magus was shutting our opponent out anyway. So is it worth playing this sort of thing? I don't think so. I think we could make some changes to our deck and improve it, just lean harder into these prison elements. But then why why are we running like whole breach of days undoing instead of just being a mono red prison deck with like things like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Broadside Bombardiers and just a bunch of good cards that exist that we can run, have a smooth amount of base where we're not going to be falling over ourselves trying to get our extra colour. And I don't know the answer to that one. I don't think there is a reason to be playing this other than the fact that it's uh, really silly and fun, which, you know, is certainly there. And if you're playing smaller tournaments, fine. But if you're slapping down an entry fee for like a big competitive tournament, you're going to want something that's got a little bit more chops to it, which isn't this. But there's a, there's a time and a place for decks like this. And my channel is clearly one of them. Uh, I do enjoy playing some weird and wonderful stuff. And sometimes you play these weird things and you get a glimpse of something that makes you go, ooh, actually, can we do something else with it? Uh, maybe there's something solid here, not necessarily this list, but there's something that we can take from it and repurpose. But I think we just showcased how good Magus of the Moon is, especially with loads of people playing lots of Surveil Lands now as well. There's just more and more ways to get punished in the world of Magus of the Moon and Blood Moon. And I think playing more Blood Moons is good. Not necessarily sure we should be playing blue. What we could do, I suppose, is... If we do want to keep the Force of Will package, we could trim on the Trinispheres. So if we move the Trinispheres over here into like this selection of stuff that we can tinker with. So if we're putting a load of fast mana in the deck, so we want, what, six cards? So let's move all these things over here. So we have like, say, six cards go over here to become some faster mana. Now, Dak Faden can certainly loot away fast mana later on, and that's fine. This leaves us four more slots to tinker with, so we could have another Blood Moon. Oh, we've already got the Burrow over here to represent that. So we've got another Blood Moon here. We could run another Blood Moon if we want to, just have five, because it did feel very strong right now. But we could also turn these into some more Days Undoing and lean slightly more into that. We could have another Khan. We could have some Chandras. I think they would have actually felt all right in this one as a bit of removal. Maybe that's our interaction instead of the Brazen Borrower. We just have a couple of Chandras here. And then we have four days on doing. Then the Fury starts to look a bit questionable. So maybe the Fury comes out and we bring back in something like the Prismatic Chart Command. This is very good under a Chrome Mox. It helps us loot away when we've got some bad draws. It is interaction our fashion. And it has some synergy with the whole Breacher. Pitches to all of our pitch spells. So maybe that's something better here. So with those changes I just mentioned, it would look something a bit more like this. So we've got stuff going on. But then... We do have a lot of pitch cards with these Force of Wills and these Chrome Moxes, but we've kind of tried to mitigate that by having four days undoing that we can just use as a, you know, a refuel. We give our opponent a random seven early on whilst we've played out some fast mana. That, that works pretty well for Storm decks. We can kind of do a similar thing. You know, if we if we have our opening hand and we play like Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, cast days undoing, you know, we're way, way up ahead of that 
on a turn one play. So maybe that is worth doing. Days on doing also is like soft graveyard hate. Like, yes, it is three mana, but we're ramping out to it. And this can allow us to like get rid of something that they've entombed or cycled or whatever. So this probably looks a little bit better to me. Like we're still a bit light on win conditions, especially now we've just dropped some more. But Khan the Great Creator does quite a lot of work and we can always just steal their things of Dak Faden, right? Just turn it into an artifact and take it using the Khan. We're more about that suppressing our opponent from doing anything sort of plan. So this looks kind of better. Maybe we put the Trinisphere in the sideboard instead. And that's a thing that we can bring in for certain matchups. Like Trinisphere is really good against like the Storm decks, obviously. So maybe that's where we're bringing that in. I just think in the main deck, if we're trying to play like a Force of Will game, maybe we want to lean into that more. And by having all these zero drops, that's not something you want alongside a Trinisphere. So maybe this is a slightly better configuration. Obviously, you change the land, so I'm not going to do that right now. That gives you an idea. Alternatively, we just get rid of the Force of Wills here and play the three. Tr the we play some Trinispheres in its place, and we just have all these things and try and skip the curve. Uh, we'd also be running, probably also be running two less lands here as well. So you get two more slots to play with, perhaps. So. Because you want about 30 mana sources, I think. So we have a couple of lands here that are the double face cards. So like Shatter Skull Smashing type thing. As well as maybe some more basics in there. And this is a slightly healthier looking deck. And we get two more slots to play with. So you could just put in another Khan, another Dak Fane if you want. Or Prismari Command. Or some kind of win condition. Maybe the Furies come back in. But I think, you know, I think that's a relatively thorough look at that deck from me there this isn't necessarily my exact sort of jam i'm more into the sort of the janky things we could do with going gratuitous with <laughs> dak Vaden. but we'll get to that at some point in the channel don't you worry all right i think we are done for today so remember to like and subscribe and subscribe if you enjoyed this one and if you didn't enjoy it maybe do it anyway it helps me out why not all right thank you so much for watching and goodbye if you'd like to support me in the channel please check out my patreon it has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.